Welcome to AHSC TV's Weekly Roundup. In this week's programme, Sri Lankan rugby player's body exhumed amidst election campaign. Continuing police violence in Nepal as new constitution is debated. Schools and colleges in Indian state of Manipur shut down by government. Murder of secular bloggers continue amidst absence of justice in Bangladesh. Child abuse scandal uncovered in Pakistan. Welcome to AHSC TV's Weekly Roundup, I'm Josefina Bergstam. The program begins in Sri Lanka, where the quest for improved criminal justice procedures has seen positive developments in the midst of the final week election campaigning. With parliamentarian elections scheduled for this coming Monday, August 17, the body of famous Sri Lankan rugby player Wasim Tajuddin has been exhumed. Tajuddin died under mysterious circumstances three years ago. His body was found in a burning car that appeared to have crashed against the wall in Colombo. Under alleged pressure from the government under former president Rajapaksa, the investigation qu uh, quickly concluded that it was an accident despite evidence pointing to foul play. According to sources, Rajapaksa's youngest son, Yoshita, who captained the national rugby team and Tajuddin, had had a falling out over a woman. There appears to have been signs of a fabricated crash scene and torture on the body. The investigation has now reopened and the body has been exhumed to re-examine it for signs of torture and cause of death. This is bad news for former President Rajapaksa, who is hoping for a comeback in next week's election by winning the prime ministership. Rajapaksa is claiming that this whole affair is part of a smear campaign designed to scupper his chances of winning. According to AHRC, reopening the case is long overdue and a good sign that the need for criminal justice reforms are being taken seriously in Sri Lanka. The public has the right to know if this was a genuine accident and if not, who was involved. For more on this, AHRC TV speaks to AHRC's Director of Policy and Programme, Basil Fernando. Uh, two uh, very uh, important cases are being talked about by Sri Lankans all over the country uh, within the last two weeks or so. Uh, both uh, have uh, serious political implications. One is the uh, reinvestigation, the exhumation of the body of uh, Wasim Tadyuddin, who was killed about uh, 2012. And at the time, the case was presented as an accident and uh, the hushed up. However, on the basis of new information, the criminal investigation system uh, division of Sri Lanka has uh, got magistrate permission to exhume the body. It has been done now and very soon the report will come. Uh, in all, for all indications, it is a murder and the murder involving the, uh, the family of the former president and his uh, security uh, division. The, the fact that this was hushed up means that it could have been done so only with the patronage of the president himself. Now the other case is even more damaging to the uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa and his government is the uh, the case of Prageet Ekanayalikoda who disappeared few years back. Uh, he was a cartoonist and the, the government uh, vehemently denied having anything to do with uh, uh, his disappearance and that even trying to uh, got reports be made in the United Nations and other places. Uh, denying any kind of uh, uh, involvement. However, now it has been uh, uh, reinvestigated and found that in fact he was uh, arrested by the military and taken to a military camp, questioned there and thereafter he was taken out on a trip and he had never returned. And that this uh, his arrest was on the orders from the very top. 
uh, the, is a clear case of uh, uh, highly organized uh, disappearances in which uh, the, the senior most politicians are involved. The question that is before the uh, people in both of these cases is, uh, will the uh, former president and uh, in the second case of Pragit Ekanayaliyakad, also his uh, brother, uh, the Gotabi Rajapaksa, will be brought to account for these uh, 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 two crimes. Has the Sri Lankan state the capacity and the courage and the strength to do that. These are one of the most important political questions that will uh, influence the uh, events for considerable time. Meanwhile, there is the election on the uh, for the parliament on the ne on next Monday. Uh, there is a, a quite a lot of expectation that the uh, the present minority government uh, may get uh, more uh, seats this time and will be able to establish a more stable government. That's a crucial matter because much of what is to be done about enormous criminalities that has happened within the last uh, few years of Mahindra Rajapaksa regime will depend on a change uh, uh, that uh, by which a stable government can be created, which can deal with these problems. We hope that there will be such an outcome at the election. AHSC TV will feature a special Sri Lankan election report in next week's program. Next, AHSC TV reports from Northeast India. The state government of Manipur has ordered the temporary closure of educational institutions. The decision has been made, quote, in consideration of the physical safety and security of the students of all institutions in Imphal area, end quote. The order was issued after the death of a 16-year-old student protester on July 8th. He was killed in a police crackdown during a student mass protest in support of the implementation of an inner line permit system in Manipur. Large numbers of injuries have been reported during the crackdown. Manipur's Education Minister M. Okendra said the government would reopen all schools and colleges in the Greater Imphal area on July 16. He said the government would deploy security forces in and around all educational institutions to foil attempts by organizations to use students for inner line permit protests. But so far, the educational institutions remain closed. The root cause of the inner line permit protest is a rapid increase of migration from other parts of India and a fear by ind indigenous people in Manipur of becoming minorities in their own homeland. A reality now faced elsewhere in Northeast India, for instance, in the state of Tripura. And now on to riot police violence amidst widespread protests in Nepal in relation to constitutional reform. Different groups and communities are protesting all over Nepal, seeking reflection of their issues and rights in the new constitution. Many Nepalese are not happy after the recent delineation of Greater Nepal into six states. People have turned violent against this demarcation. Dalits are demanding proportionate representation with additional compensation in the central and provincial governments and legislature. In response to the public protests, the police have failed to rely on modern measures of crowd control and have instead resorted to charging with batons and hurling bricks at Dalit protesters seen here in Kathmandu. Elsewhere, the police fired bullets on protesters in Surkhet district in western Nepal, where three protesters have reportedly died. Police claimed they, they only shot in the air. According to the AHSC, vulnerable communities need to be guaranteed basic rights in the upcoming constitution, 
as they have already suffered centuries of discrimination and oppression. A democracy like Nepal should not deal with constitution reform by resorting to police brutality. The HSC TV spoke with some of the Dalit protesters in Kathmandu. <laughs> Next, the roundup turns to Bangladesh. Yet another blogger has been assassinated in Bangladesh capital city Dhaka on August 7. The latest murder was committed against Niladri Chathapadia, who used Niloy Neil as his Facebook name. He was hacked to death in a residential flat in Dhaka. Niladri had been accused of being an anti-Islamic blogger. A number of organizations, including the Awami Ulama League, a wing of the ruling party of Bangladesh, submitted a list of bloggers to the Ministry of Home Affairs, demanding punishment for their blasphemous writings against religious beliefs, particularly Islam. Niladri is now the fifth blogger since February 2013 who has been murdered in Bangladesh. Razib Haider, Aka Taba Baba, Avijit Roy, Washikur Raman Babu, and Ananta Bijoy Das are bloggers murdered previously. None of their cases have so far been credibly investigated by law enforcement agencies. The police have blamed the Islamic militants for the murders. Despite the involvement of the US Federal Bureau of Investigation, which became involved after Abhijit Roy's assassination in February this year, not a single case has been solved up to now. The ruling party, instead of following the democratic path, is portraying a picture of growing Islamic militancy in the country. It has been alleged the ruling party is doing so in order to that Islamophobic global groups endorse support to the ruling party, allowing it to continue in office despite it having held on to power through non-transparent and non-credible election. Next, AHRC TV reports on shocking revelations from Pakistan where at least 280 children have been sexually abused and filmed by a gang of 15 men for a decade. Most of the victims were under 14 years old and often intoxicated and drugged before being assaulted. The men recorded the assault and many of the children were continually blackmailed to pay the rapists or threatened that the videos would be sold or leaked. The police, however, have been playing down the gravity of the matter, even claiming that the acts were generally consensual. Nonetheless, seven of the accused have now been arrested, according to the police, while hundreds of residents have staged protests, accusing the police and local politicians of protecting the gang members and ignoring the accusations. The fact that the gang was only recently busted, even though they have been operating in the village since 2006, speaks volumes about the state of affairs in rural policing. 
The parents of the children were afraid of reporting the incident to the police, knowing that the police would not respond. As feared, the police responded only after the incident caught media attention. That is all for this weekly roundup. For more on these and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia. Thank you for watching and see you again next week.